Japanese industrial engineer and businessman Taichi Ono once said, Without standards, there can be no improvement. In the last several years, standards within the small form factor embedded computing space have made a big difference in the trajectory of our embedded designs. And I, for one, appreciate standards. I like instructions. I like rules. I like how we can all come together and agree on a path forward, and especially engineers. That can be kind of tough sometimes. And we can probably all agree that it's about time we talk about embedded computing standards here on Chalk Talk, right? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Trends in today's embedded computing designs, including smart sensors, autonomous vehicles, and edge computing, are making embedded computing industry standards more important than ever before. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Matthew Burns from Samtech joins me to discuss how standards organizations like PC104, PICMIG, and VITA are encouraging innovation in today's embedded designs, how Samtech supports each of these standards organizations, and how you can utilize Samtech's high-performance interconnects for your next small form factor embedded computing designs. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. Hey, Matt, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia, it's good to be with you in 2022. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about small form factor industry standards for embedded computing today. But Matt, before we get started, what kind of trends are you seeing driving the need for these types of standards? There are a ton of trends that Samtech sees that are influencing embedded computing, especially in small form factors. When it comes to uh, embedded computing, there's four trends that we see, at least affecting the customers that we're dealing with. One is smart sensors. I think you and I have both seen in the embedded space over the last several years that sensors continue to get more and more intelligent. However, when it comes to the embedded space, especially, you know, industrial applications, factory automation, those types of things, not all sensors that are used in that space are what you would call smart air quotes. So we see increasing trends uh, within the embedded computing space and within the standards bodies to assist sensor vendors that may not have quote unquote smart sensors, but to help them get that data into the digital realm more easily. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail as we go through the presentation. Something I'm sure you've heard more and more as we get into 21 is the multiverse that has many different meanings for many different people. But in the embedded space, I think you're going to see a lot more virtual development. I mean, we've talked about the digital twin in past conversations, uh, whether that's being just you know from a design standpoint or from a simulation standpoint, it's really going to affect product development. I've been listening to a number of, again, prognosticators on this topic that come up multiple times. And it'll be interesting to see how the multiverse affects embedded system design or embedded component design throughout 22. There's also a number of prognosticators, a number of folks within the industries that we play in where 2022 is, is really listed as a pivot point for autonomous vehicles. There's been a lot of development that's been, been put into this industry segment or this industry vertical for a number of years, in some cases, decades. To overuse the pun, we're starting to hit the rubber, uh, hit the road. A couple of things I've seen, a number of the delivery companies, logistic companies, you know, the FedExes, the UPSs, the Amazons, they're working with autonomous vehicle providers from delivery trucks. Seems to be a major push, especially when it comes to driver shortage, which is driving supply chain issues. But more interestingly, I'm starting to see legislation that is enabling wider applications for autonomous vehicles. I live in the state of Pennsylvania in the East Coast of the United States. And the legislation here in our state recently expanded some of the laws and some of the legal structures to enable more autonomous vehicles uh, in the market. And then lastly, I think a big trend that we'll continue to see in 2022, just to build upon what we've seen over the last two years, is increased computing performance at the fog or at the edge. ComHPC is a standard we'll talk about here in just a moment, but ComHPC really enables uh, server-grade performance in edge computing applications. So something else to look forward to uh, as we move into this year. Indeed. Now, Matt, I have been a follower of these kind of industry standards for years, but for my audience who may not know, what are some of the most popular embedded computing standard groups in this space? We're going to talk about three that Samtech focuses in on. PC-104, PicMig, and Vita. PC-104 briefly focuses on rugged, compact, expandable embedded computers. 
PICMIC is more focused on the system level, open standards for high-performance embedded computing applications. When we talk about Vita, it's, it's really focused on real-time modular embedded systems, typically rugged applications, mill aero, industrial, and other solutions. So Matt, let's dig into the PC-104 consortium a bit. What are they all about? The biggest focus that PC-104 consortium has is, is really focused on single-board computers, structured, modular, stackable, single-board computers. PC-104 was established in 1992. That's really the dawn of the PC compute revolution. And the impetus for the formation of PC-104 was to take standard desktop computer technology and apply it to embedded applications. So the solutions are really focused on connector-intensive uh, stackable SPC, single-board computers for modular architectures. PC-104 offers simple and elegant designs for rugged applications. Some typical solutions include oil rigs, CubeSats, which are used in uh, satellite communications and, and other mill aero style communication networks, industrial transportation, and many more. The nice thing about PC-104, which we'll see in just a moment, is that the standard has continued to evolve and expand, not only as computing architectures have changed, but also as speeds and densities have increased. Now, what kind of options do I have when it comes to PC-104? From Samtech's perspective, we focus in on three areas. PC-104 was obviously the original base standard. It leveraged original PC bus uh, interfaces. You can see from the illustration that it was a rugged, compact form factor with self-stacking buses. It used state-of-the-art 0.1-inch or 2.54-millimeter pin and socket headers, which were very standard at the time. Matching standoffs uh, were also available. Moving from PC-104 to PC-104+, Plus, this was really an evolution as the PCI bus, which was common in desktop applications at the time, continued to expand to a 32-bit infrastructure. So the base PC-104 connector was used, but the number of pin counts expanded. So this went up to 120-pin contact system. And then lastly, uh, we've seen the evolution to PC-104 Express which really started to take advantage of the movement from PCI to PCIe within embedded computing applications. So the connector had to be improved in terms of a high-speed design. You can see in the illustration on the right that there's high-speed ground planes that are available within the system. This connector is also more rugged. It can be used in, in harsh environments, and uh, it can support data rates up to PCIe 4.0, which is uh, 16 gigatransfers per second. So for all three of these standards, PC-104, PCI-104+, Plus, PC-104 Express, Samtech has industry standard solutions for all flavors of PC-104 consortium standards, and those are already available from Samtech and from Mauser. Excellent. Now, Matt, what about PICMIG? What are they doing these days? So we talked earlier about how PICMIG is really focusing on open standard solutions within embedded computing architectures. One of the unique solutions that PICMIG has been working on over the last couple of years, and Samtech's been a part of that, is a new standard called MicroSAM, which is all about enabling smart sensors. The end result of the MicroSAM efforts is that PICMIG, working along with its partners, has developed a differentiated IoT architecture, which allows plug and play capability, not only from the component standpoint, but all the way up to application-based software. At the hardware level, this new MicroSAM module, which is 32 millimeters squared, taps into that trend we talked about, smart sensors. For sensor vendors that still have analog output sensors, plugging that sensor into a MicroSAM module provides a standard feature to getting data from the analog world into the digital world, not only electrically, but also getting it into the IoT by means of the stack and the application level software that the MicroSAM standard supports. The MicroSAM module itself is targeted at uh, MCUs that's used in an IoT sensor node. You know, think about a manufacturing line. You know, you're going to have multiple uh, workstations that may have a current sensor, it may have a temperature sensor, it may have a visible light sensor, any, any type of sensors that may just have an analog output. By plugging those sensors into a MicroSAM and then tying it back to the control room, leveraging the stack that MicroSAM has come up with or the PicMing MicroSAM standard uh, supports, and it offers plug and play uh, support for uh, sensor vendors and for OEMs as well. One of the additional benefits of MicroSAM is that it exists in parallel with other embedded technologies, uh, especially from PICMIG. One of the standards we'll talk about here in just a moment is PICMIG's uh, COMHPC standard, which again gives server-grade performance uh, at the edge, which is again another trend that we're seeing in factory automation, process automation, and other rugged applications. 
So Matt, what kind of connector solutions do you guys have for the PicMig microSAMP? If you recall from the picture from the previous slide, Amelia, you'll see that there is a number of wire to board connectors on the microSAM. These leverage Samtex one millimeter micromate discrete wire system. Within that family, we support cable to board, cable to cable, and cable to panel applications. The PCB connectors are available either vertical or right angle. You can see that they support up to 20 contacts in a single row or 40 in a double row. Very small form factors as given by the uh, one millimeter pitch. We also have rugged single or double latching for solid connection. And we also have Teflon wire available for high temp or halogen free uh, applications. All of the product solutions within Micromate are available for Mauser as we speak. Excellent. Now, Matt, PicMig also plays a role in the high performance compute arena as well, right? Yes, they do. And to be honest with you, with the release of the new ComHPC standard from PicMig earlier in 21, we see this as one of the not only the responses to the need for server-grade performance at the edge, but also one of the driving factors for increased performance within embedded computing applications. A lot of people ask, why did Pikmin have to come up with ComHPC when ComExpress is such a workhorse with embedded computing? And the matter of the fact is, is as great as ComExpress is and as, and as widely used as it is, it has limitations in terms of the data rates that it can support and the latest protocols that it can support. So ComHPC was really developed to answer those concerns. ComHPC defines two modules, a server and a client. They use two 400-pin high-performance connectors. There's also a system management interface. One of the other benefits of ComHPC is that it enables the use of different compute engines in embedded applications. Instead of just using x86 processors, it also opens up applications for FPGAs, RISC processors, GPGPUs, and others. With all this said, ComHPC is not designed to be a replacement for ComExpress. It's just an evolution for higher performance. It also enables higher-end CPUs, increased memory, and increased and faster I.O. options. PicMig did a really nice job, not just focusing on the module itself, but looking at the system level design. You can see from the illustration on the right that there's a heat spreader for thermal concerns, and there's also best design practices to get increased data rates and SI performance concerns uh, from the ComHPC modules down to a custom carrier board. So Matt, what about the ComHPC versus ComExpress? How do they stack up? You can see in the graphic on the left that the biggest advantage that ComHPC offers is speed and density. The maximum data rate supported right now is 32 gigabit per second per pin. So that's more than 3x increase from ComExpress. It uses a denser connector, so we're able to get from 440 pins on ComExpress update 800 in a slightly larger form factor. Going through the graphic, more memory, more power, more PCIe. One of the things that we're excited about at Samtech is that the ComHPC standard supports PCI Express 5.0, which gets data rates up to 32 gigatransfers per second. And then you'll see that there's also support for different compute engines like FPGAs, MCUs, risk processors, and the like. ComHPC also defines five form factors, size A through C, illustrated on the right-hand side. These are scalable. So as long as you have the design hooks in for the size E module, when placing a size A module on your carrier card, you can migrate from size A to size E, providing supply chain redundancies and also simplifying design over the life of a product. So Matt, what do you guys have to offer when it comes to ComHPC interconnects? We're a connector company, Amelia, so it only makes sense that ComHPC used one of Samtech's high-performance connectors. In this case, Pikmin ComHPC adopted a variant of Samtech's Accelerate HP platform. This offers high-performance, flexible, open-pin field array solutions, supports PCIe 5 and 100 gigabit Ethernets. Each connector pair is 400-pin BGA mount. BGA not only leverages standard manufacturing processes, but it also allows for self-alignment which when using small pin connectors and such a dense solution is a nice added feature. And then the mechanicals of the part really have been designed to increase performance as well as provide density within such a small space. Also, power was not sacrificed. So you think about moving from supporting a laptop grade CPU up to a server grade CPU, you're going to need more power. So ComHPC is able to support up to 360 watts of power and our connectors are able to handle that as well. So Samtech's standard ComHPC interconnect solutions are readily available from Mauser as well as we speak. 
So Matt, I have been a big fan of the Vita organization for several years now. So let's talk about them as well. Again, Amelia, we could spend an entire chalk talk just talking about Vita. So I'm going to try to summarize it down to one slide. Vita has been around since 1984. Their focus is on open system architecture definitions for real-time, modular, critical embedded computing systems. What type of applications are we talking about? Mill arrow, security, transportation, automation, medical imaging, semiconductor processing. It's kind of hard to list everything in one slide. And as we mentioned, since Vita has been one of the original embedded computing standards bodies, their work has affected popular infrastructures such as VME bus, PMC, VXS, VPX, FMC, and even more that we don't even have time to consider right now. So Matt, there are many different Vita standards, right? Yes, Amelia, there's over 100 as we speak, so we don't have time to cover all of them. But a few of the standards that Samtech plays in are illustrated in this one side. The XMC specification, Vita 42, refers to expansion mezzanine card. Vita 42 has been around since the early part of this millennium. Vita 88 XMC Plus is a recently released expansion of the original XMC specification, allows for higher speeds, increased density, uh, and a pathway to increase PCI Express speeds. Something you and I have talked about numerous times on Chalk Talks are the Vita 57 1 FPGA mezzanine cards or FMC standard, which was released back in 2010. And then over the last few years, uh, that was expanded upon to Vita FMC Plus. The difference, again, from FMC to FMC Plus, increased channel counts, increased data rates, larger, denser connectors, and really enabling support of up to 56 gigabit per second PAM4 data rates for the latest FPGA development kits from the leading suppliers in that space. And then lastly, one of the new standards that's come out more recently is uh, Vita 74 VNX, which is really intended as a small form factor, rugged computing infrastructure. One of the most popular Vita standards is VPX. VNX is really designed to be an evolution of VPX. It's smaller, it's denser, it allows for higher speeds. And as the standard continues to evolve, there's a Vita 90 specification that's in development right now. Uh, It should really target next generation, rugged uh, embedding computing applications. Now, what does Samtech offer in this arena? One of the commonalities of four of the five standards that we just reviewed is the fact that they all use variants of Samtech C-Ray high-density open pin field arrays. C-Ray offers lower insertion extraction forces versus typical array products. It leverages Samtech's differentiated vias, which optimize breakout and routing to get high-speed performance up to 56 GPM4. It has a small pitch, 1.27 millimeters. It offers a, a variety of stack heights, a variety of pin counts. There's also Samtech's rugged edge rate contacts, which leverages the mechanical design of the contact for long-life applications. The family is also very flexible because it can support parallel, perpendicular, and coplanar applications. This graphic illustrates the flexibility of C-Ray, Amelia. Any one pin can act as a high-speed differential pair, a high-speed single-ended signal, or deliver a decent amount of current over one pin. Now, obviously, the layout has to be optimized to achieve the maximum results, but Samtech signal integrity experts stand ready to help not only support the Vita applications that adopt C-Ray, but also C-Ray in any application as well. So, Matt, that was a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? I'd be glad to. The biggest takeaway that we hope your listeners benefit from is that Samtech offers a comprehensive portfolio of high-performance interconnect that is totally focused on embedded computing applications and small form factor. We back that up with a global team of technical experts, online design tools, and world-class customer service to support design in any application. For more information on these and other solutions, please visit the Mauser website at mauser.com slash Samtech. You can check out samtech.com slash standards or email our standards team at standards at samtech.com. Fantastic. Well, Matt, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. We always love talking with you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from E journal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal. <laughs>